Hello travelers, this is a reading for Aries, Sun, Moon and Rising for November 2023. As you can tell, my speech is getting a little bit better. Uh, I am doing well. I hope everyone else is doing well as well. Well as well. Well too. Uh, and I hope everybody got a chance to see the eclipse. I saw it from my back porch. It was beautiful. Um, this is a general reading and therefore the messages will not resonate with everyone. I suggest that you check back to your moon and rising sign. But also, if you recognize the situation, it's a general reading. So you might want to contact me for a personal reading. Uh, you can go to my about box section and there I have the number of questions, the number of minutes and the price. If so, you can contact me at that address, email address there on the screen and say, hey Tara, I would like a 45 minute reading or whatever and I will contact you and we will book the reading. I want to thank those of you who have already booked and you received your readings. I appreciate the confidence that you have in me to read for you, particularly since I had the stroke. So um, it sounds, I know people think that I have lost my edge and that they may not be able to understand me, but I'm assured from the folks that got a reading a week or so ago that they perfectly understand and I put closed captions on the so you you can really understand what I'm trying to say so with that I have with me the radiant white deck the La Vida Sibila for clarification and I'm working with two oracle card decks. I have the Golden Nostradamus and the Psychic Tarot Oracle deck. I didn't pull out the Heart Oracle Tarot because I'm not prompted to work with them today. So, if we, I hate this chair. Absolutely hate it. And so, um, if you are ready to do the reading, I will turn the camera around. I have done some pre-meditation and shuffling on your sign and glyph. I will try to put one more rifle on it and shuffle. Just so you can see, I am shuffling the deck. This is a quite difficult, it's rather cool today, so my arm is not as flexible. Okay, nine cards down. Here we go. The star card. The Five of Pentacles or Five of Coins, the Ten of Wands, next row, the Queen of Swords, the Fool card, 
the nine of wands the king of coins the ace of swords and the five of swords wow that's different what is underneath the deck the overall energy of the reading it is the page of swords so what do I have I have two major arcana two pentacles three swords and two wands there are no cups here so because I have so many twos I think it's a relationship issue but let me say that it doesn't have to be a romantic issue particularly since I don't see any cups but it could be a business issue I also have two fives and it's always significant when numbers repeat themselves I have two court cards as well and this long page over the whole reading so let's start with the page I always read pages as a message it's not an event it is a message that comes in but also the page of swords can be a tricky character spying uh, lying um, but he is also a student of communication which means he has no problems with getting to the truth about something so to start with past present future past present future and the interplay of the cards right in the center we have the full card and the full card can be read in several ways but for the most part the full card talks about going on a journey whether figuratively or literally it can be that you are experiencing new avenues of thinking of freedom of being it can be that you are trying something new let me put it that way but the flip side of the fool card warns you not to be foolish not to fall for the same tricks again uh, pay attention to everything that is going on because there might be some pitfalls now starting with the star card in the top row the star card basically means that your hopes wishes and dreams are coming true that you are healing if there is anything wrong with you emotionally physically spiritually and it counsels you to not give up hope as you can see the figure in the card is naked and nakedness implies that you are comfortable within yourself and she is pouring out she is dipping into the well and she's pouring out the water in the five directions so sometimes this card can mean drawing from your own well 
but it can also point to the cosmology or the astrology of an event. I don't see any, <coughs> pardon me, I don't see any horses or movement, so to speak, in this spread, but I think it is implied. We come to the five of coins and this five of coins can be literally that you are feeling sorry for yourself. Uh, you're having a dark night of the soul, which is completely different from the star energy. It could be that you are feeling as though you don't have enough money to take care of your basic needs. So you may have lost a job or a contract or a, there's a proposal you were hoping to get, but you didn't get it. The five coins tell me that there are five things that you can do or should do or might want to do. The coins are not just about money. They are about the physical doing of things. The coins represent the third dimension, the third dimensional aspect. But as a five, it also counsels for you not to give up hope. Because you are about to complete something that you didn't know you could do. I also think with the Ten of Wands, this was a heavy lift for you. And possibly still can be. You feel as if you are taking on other people's responsibilities. Or you have a, a lot of work on your shoulders. But I always say the Ten of Wands is not a burden because he's not carrying those wands on his back. He's carrying them in front of him, on his, in, in, his, in his arms. It implies that he's not seeing where he's going. To me, that's a lot of irons in the fire card. But the secret is, if it's too much and you're not sharing the load, delegating the load, then you can simply drop five of the wands, lighten the load, and see where you are going. Now, sometimes there is a house. This can be about buying a house. And something has gone terribly terribly wrong in the purchase of the home or the renting of the home or the selling of the home. Here on the second row, we find the Queen of Swords. Normally, she is a Libra, but can be any air sign. And additionally, even though you are in Aries, you still have to, you can still take the sign of this queen. You can be like this queen. Her profession, she can be a lawyer, a mediator, a counselor, a police officer, a chef, a surgeon, a oral surgeon, a, a writer, an editor, a researcher. Anywhere that sharp tools and keen intellect are needed to get the job done. And as you can see, she is welcoming this new thing that is coming in with the fool. She ultimately holds the sword of truth. So it's like justice. She too has no problems with getting to the truth. She is often known as the divorcee queen. Supposedly, she is mean and bitter. I don't think she's mean and bitter. I think that gives her a bad rap. But I think she has had some painful experiences. And her outcome, her outlook 
it's based on that that's it here we have the nine of wands now before it was a nine it was an eight so to me it implies that either something occurred rapidly or you received some news rapidly the wands always to me read like your focus determination fire what are you most excited about but then too those things are it can be what's the word i'm trying to like an excited utterance it can be anger as well from the fire from the wands and as you can see on the card the figure appears to have been in a battle or a fight as a matter of fact he's got his head bandage and he's leaning on a wand behind him are the eight wands but yet he's leaning on one this card when it appears says that you have enough energy to get back in there and fight again if you have to and I say you will have to it also says you are of good strength and character and that you should get back in the fight if need be on the last row we have the king of coins normally a Taurus but can be a Virgo or a Capricorn as a profession this man can be a banker a financial advisor a stockbroker a loan officer uh, or just somebody who has access to a lot of money he may advise you about finances of some, in some way he is usually very smart like he has the Midas touch everything he touches turns to gold but if he is in his negative he is somebody greedy uh, kind of debauched an excessive individual excessive in the uh, sense that he partakes of all things in the third dimension so he could be a gambler he could be a drinker he could do drugs like that now I think the most interesting card is this ace of swords of all the aces in the deck this is the most powerful ace and there is a belief that when it appears something will definitely change that's what it says it will definitely be a change and it's not anything you can do about it swords represent thoughts perceptions beliefs ideas communication so because it's a sword it speaks to new ideas uh, new communications coming in new plans and goals but it is a sword so it cuts both ways it can be the excessive degree of everything of worry anxiety fear a feeling like a dark cloud is over your head but what is certain about the card is that the energy says that things will change if you look at the ring on the sword that can even be a proposal or a marriage now in saying this a marriage can be just a contract right an engagement a proposal a marriage a contract 
and finally we end the card with the five of swords and the five of swords it is another five so five is a card of anxiety of changes of tension of ups and downs of changing energy all the time and this card says you know here something will change but how it will change it can be gossip backbiting um, fighting with relatives or friends having to c cut somebody down with words it says it's a victory card you see how the figure there and those two figures are walking away so it is a victory card and it says stand up for yourself in a dispute but you must be careful with this energy of this card because the two people that you're fighting with will sink to any levels to win and I'm picking up that the page or the message that the page brings has something to do with this now I said there were two fives and let me explain about the ten wands and the nine wands the ten is a focus on completion of events the nine is also a focus on completion only you have one more thing to do so this says you need to stop rest think about what you're do you're doing gather your energy before you continue on to the ten but they are out of sequence it's a ten and then a nine so to me it appears that just when you think you are about to finish something occurs and you have to back up a step and then it escalates to an all-out battle of wits a battle of words so let me look in my book and see what two fives speak about sometimes this card can be about a breakup or a separation and a break in a relationship okay two fives speak of new experiences ahead what I was talking about a sim a separation a permanent breakup of a partnership or relationship of some kind due to the choices made by another it may be telling of a breakup or severance of an important relationship a partnership and indicates the abrupt parting of ways I, I don't know what this is about so I can look at these two cards because technically they represent people what does that leave me the five of coins the ten of wands nine of wands ace of swords and the five of swords as they relate to the star card and the fool now it tells me how many swords do you have four swords can imply a ser serious disagreement and or argument that may lead to the severance 
of a partnership, friendship, or business, it might indicate, it might even indicate the loss of a legal battle, case, or battle. Let me repeat that. With four swords cards, it can imply a serious dis disagreement and uh, or argument that may lead to the severance of a partnership, friendship, or business and may even indicate the loss of a legal case or, or battle. Okay. Let's do the Ten of Wands. Next to the Fool, Ten of Wands. It is telling you to look carefully into a situation as you may have misjudged or miscalculated miscalcul the situation and it needs reconsideration or correction before it is able to come to positive fruition. Now notice that at the start of the reading it talks about your hopes and dreams coming true. And so with the Ten of Wands and the Star card, it implies that your current plans will come to fruition in quick time and all that you undertake will be successful. A most favorable outcome is following. But here, something happened. Because now it's a struggle for you. Let's look at the Nine of Wands. Next to the Ten of Wands. When the Nine of Wands appears next to the Ten of Wands, it denotes that negotiations regarding real estate, property, buildings, rentals, buying and renovating will be fruitful in the near future. I don't think so. I don't think so. Let's look at the Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords doesn't tell me anything. Except this. The Ace of Swords in a spread implies that there is a focus on a critical and potential volatile situation or circumstance. You may find yourself in a position of having to take action or make a decision under stressful circumstances. It is important that you keep your emotions balanced in order to make the correct decision. And the Five of Swords. I can tell you with the all of the swords, there's a lot of information transpiring, messages, talk, speech. And with the Five of Swords, it doesn't tell me anything. Let me see what else I can find. Nothing else. So I'm going to. And if I want to look at something, I'm going to look at the page of swords because he is over the whole spread and he's looking over it. As a matter of fact, this figure, this figure, and this figure, and this and that figure, they're all looking or face that way. 
directionality is very important in the tarot. But I have a feeling that this page is quite significant. And in fact, this is the beginning start of message. It's very tentative. Maybe you hear some rumblings or something about this property deal or this business negotiation. I don't necessarily see, or it could be, yes, it's a property deal. The cards are the desperate jealousy, the morte, and the disgrazia. Well, look, I can only tell you this. Whatever the page is, the message is about, is going to be kaput. It's over, it's finished, it's done. And it will be painful. Let me give you the meaning of the cards. The desperate jealousy. It doesn't really mean desperate jealousy, but what it talks about. Mm -mm -mm. They're all swords cards. Every one of them. Uh, let me find it. This can be sometimes someone having suicidal tendencies. And it's about not seeing beyond the present moment or being stuck in the past. Unable to resolve a problem. It does indicate all forms of self-harm. Feelings of deep shame and guilt and regret. Financially, it indicates heavy losses that can very well lead someone to suicide. It indicates heavy debt, insolvency, and overspending as well as trouble with the law and a cutthroat work environment. Legally, it indicates a judgment made against uh, you and criminal proceedings. The card, the card warns you that there, you may be about to trust someone who will ultimately, uh, ultimately lead to your ruin. As shown by the man on the card leaning against the rock with a gun at his head and an empty bottle at his feet. In love, it can indicate extreme jealousy, envy, and possessiveness, as well as a selfish, excuse me, selfish love centered around social gratification and social climbing. Love, if it can be called love, comes with a heavy price to pay. In any kind of relationship, it indicates lack of trust and loss of self-respect. The next card is the Morte. It is the Cosmic Scissors. It comes to cut a situation completely, abruptly, and finally. Someone has either said something or done something and they can never go back to the way it was before. Okay? And the disgrazia, shame, tears, anguish, public humiliation. And so this does not bode well, but I will say... He is on the defense and perhaps this figure is either a mediator, 
a counselor, a lawyer, even. And she is ready to fight. So, let me shuffle the deck. I was not expecting that, uh, such a strong set of cards. Remember, there are five things that you can do or that can be done to help yourself out of this situation. But I believe that it is a legal battle and let me put it this way, blood will be spilled, okay? It feels like a ferocious fight. Number 10, the navigator. Those who travel far and wide, wide and far, may change the view, but never their heart. Departure for a journey or a new understanding either takes either yours or someone you know. Leave behind, leave behind, leave behind leave burdens and pain behind they are useless baggage let me say that again departure for a journey or a new undertaking either yours or someone you know leave burdens and pain behind because they are useless baggage i think uh that's a good point Sometimes you have to just let things go. Maybe get what you can. But let things go. If you can let it go, you are on your way to a new life, a new beginning. Without all the headache and the pain of the situation. I think that's the best advice the cards can give you for this situation. So until next time, namaste.